Hi everybody, Nigel here again, and I've got another review for you today. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you have seen, and certainly a lot of people have commented and um, taken a lot of interest in my Land Rover 110 Wolf. I'm doing the Hobby Boss kit in 135th scale. Um, that's a 110 inch um, long wheelbase, and I'm converting it into a short wheelbase. And I must say it's working out really, really well. Um, there's some luck in there, I think. So I'll have part four of that up for you soon. Um, I haven't done anything ever working on the book, the uh, the uh, Russian missile launcher. So I'll get the um, I'll get some more work done on the Land Rover and get another part up for you in the next day or two. Um, one of the comments I received on that on that um, project was somebody said this coincides well with the new Revell release of the Land Rover Series Three. And I thought, yeah, 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 somebody mentioned that to me a while back and I thought it's just going to be a re-release of the old Litanary kit, which is a re-release of the old Eshi kit. And it's not very nice. Um, I, I wouldn't entertain it, to be honest, especially not at the price it is these days. It's like 30 old quid, you know, and it's a, it's a, I don't know, what is it, a 40 year old kit? Um, I, I certainly don't think it's worth it. I know that Itinary is, are, at the moment are releasing a lot of the older kits, like the Lancey LC2. Um, I built that as a Protar kit and it was actually a die cast body and it was bad then so God only knows what it's like now. Um, I, see, I see they're releasing. One kit would be nice to release, uh, I would love to see them release, was the old Lancia Group 5 Monte Carlo. Uh, that was also an Eshi kit and they did a, a, a long one, the full length Group 5 in Martini colours. They also did the red, white and the blue and white stripe one, which I don't know if you remember, had the all swirls on it, absolutely gorgeous. And then they also did the Alitalia, um, the Giro d'Italia version, which was the short one. Um, I've actually got both of them built in my cabinet. They're absolutely beautiful and uh, I love those cars to bits. I actually built a replica of one, which is uh, full size, which is going around now. I, it, it, last year it was in the um, it was in the classic car show in Great Britain. Uh, if you went, you'd have seen it. And um, yeah, I, I built that um, many, many years ago. So, uh, right. What have I got for you today, this Land Rover? This is the kit. You can see it's a level three, it's 124 scale, it's got 184 parts and it's 19.4 centimetres long. And all we need to do is take one look on the back of the box here, when we look at these images of the sprues and we can see this is not the itinerary kit. This is a brand new moulding and it looks really, really nice. I haven't looked inside the box yet, it's still sealed. As you can see, it's still sealed on both ends. Um, I've seen one review of it on YouTube, which was just basically some images, some photographs taken at the uh, Ravel stand. So um, maybe this will be the first review on YouTube, who knows. But uh, let's get on the bench, let's get the box open and let's have a look. Okay, so here we go, this is the box. Um, sorry about the lighting. It's very, very glossy, this box, as you can see. As soon as I move it, you can't really see what, you, what I'm trying to show you. So I've got the light coming from each side, so it's a little bit darker than normal, a bit shadowy. But this is just so I can show you the box. We've got a lovely box, a lovely drawing um, of a... Um, it says road. There is a sign that's saying road, so that's good. Um, this is a Land Rover Series 3 long wheelbase station wagon. And it's um, level 3 kit, 124 scale, we've got 184 parts, it's 19.4 centimetres long, it's new, and this actually is new, we know we've all put new on a lot of their boxes and they're not new at all, and it's kit number 07047. I went and got this from Antics today um, because I heard it was out. I, I could have got it from Amazon or whatever and waited or ordered, ordered it from somewhere else. But I went and got it from Antics. Um, I, th this kit retails at Antics for $29.99. It can be got cheaper elsewhere. Give them a call. Drop them an email. They will price match it. So um, we'll ask them to price match it anyway. But uh, if you've got a local Antics shop down the road, there's no harm in asking. So... This is basically a station wagon, which means it's got front seats, rear seats, and there's probably going to be seats in the back here as well. And then we've got the um, the glass in the roof there. You can see we've got the spare wheel up on the roof. And we've also got a double skin with a roof rack. So, um, yeah, not like the sort of things you get these days. I keep saying these days with Land Rover Defenders. Well, when I say these days, I mean the latest ones, sort of 2007 onwards. Um, that's not, I'm not talking about, I know they don't make them anymore. Um, so, have a look around the box. 
So we've got here, it's, saying, it's telling us what the kit is. Um, keep packaging for later questions, again. And then you can see it's licensed by Land Rover. And you can see here, there's the uh, the clue. It's a brand new kit, 2019. Um, and it's got, uh, it's, it's made in made in Poland, but it's Revelled Germany, which is cool. And then we've got the same on this side, and it's just telling us about the size and the number of parts and stuff. And on the back here, we've got the, the lovely picture of the actual built prototype model. We've got some close-up pictures here. I'll give you those close-up. We can see you've got a little two and a quarter petrol engine there. We've got the standard white steel wheels. We've got down here, we've got the four wheel drive and the high, row, high, low, high low ratio knobs. Um, it's looking like this one's being depicted with a galvanized chassis because we've got a galvanized rear, rear uh, cross bumper and a galvanized front bumper. Um, I have to check, I don't think these, I think they, they had actually black painted chassis, although they may have had a galvanized front bumper. I can tell you that I've got a 2011 Defender and the, the chassis on mine is great. I wax all it from knee or stripped it all down, it's lovely, but the front bumper is absolutely rotten. So um, when you pressure watch it from inside, you get, you know, flakes of, flakes of rust coming out the size of bloody beef burgers. So it's, um, it needs replacing. And then here we've got the, um, the sprue. That's showing all your sprues laid out there. So we'll have a look in the box now and we'll see what it's all about. Um, it's saying model kits for uncomplicated plastic model building fun. Uh, easy to adhere and point, not suitable for child, children under the age of 10. So um, there we go. If you're getting one of these for your kids or something, you'd have to sit down and, uh, and do it with them. And if you'd like to see a how to build video, I'll happily do one. So let's have a look inside the box. I'll get the light in, we'll change around and we'll have a look at some sprues and decals and instructions and stuff. It looks like the box is actually quite full. It is a horrible end opening box, which Ravel keep doing, and it is the very thin cardboard. So if you put anything on top of it, it's just going to crush, which is unfortunate. But um, we'll have a look inside anyway. Right, so I'll cut this tape off, just off of one end. And cut that tape, it's got this big circular tape things on there. There's my receipt. And then we've got the, the sprues here and they're all in a, a grey plastic. And then we've got, got some more coming out here. And then we've got the actual body there. Maybe it's quite big. So here we go, there's our body. We've got some tyres there. We've got our instructions, which are stuck on some sellotape. And then we've got some separately bagged sprues here. We've got two in there. We've got our clear parts in there, separately bagged. We've got two sprues in there. We've got uh, some sprues in here. And then we've got some little sprues in there. This is almost like um, mini art with these tiny little sprues. So we'll get through these bags and we'll have a look in a minute. Let's start as usual by having a look in the instructions. Right then guys, this is my third attempt at reviewing the instructions. These new Revell instructions are lovely. They're really nice, glossy paper, great quality, great colours and everything. Unfortunately, to review, they're an absolute nightmare because as you can see now, wherever you do, you get reflections of the light. And if I have the lights far enough away so I don't get reflections of them, it's all too dark because I'm not basically in a studio. I'm basically sat in my modelling bench. So I've moved the lighting around to the best of it. Now, the last lot I did had no reflection, but I couldn't see what I was looking at. So... It was just talking a load of gobbledygook as usual. So this one should be the best of all three. So the third time lucky, eh? Let's get into these instructions. So you can see down here, 2019, it's a brand new kit. And the other thing I noticed on the front of here, you would think, wouldn't you, that when you are making a manual for one of your brand new releases and you've got a beautiful model on the front like this, and this is a beautiful model, that you would make sure it's all okay. Look at how that rear tire is fitted to that wheel. It's hanging off the rim. You can see the wheel rim there. <laughs> so uh, yeah, amazing. Right, so straight into the box we go, or straight into the book we go, and we can see we've got no reflection, so that's a good thing. And it's quite big, so I'll make sure it's all in the screen. Typical Revell, if you're not uh, familiar with these type of things, they give you some, um, Images here which tell you all about how to do your modelling and painting small parts and doing your decals and everything. And if you go to Revell DE, there's also some hints and tips on there, which is a nice touch. Then they give you all your different legends. So it's telling you here this means glue, that means don't glue, paint, 
optional, you know, remove and wait a while and bits and pieces. You've got all your different legends around there and they go over the page and it's telling me here to use um, their own decal soft for affixing the decals. You're better off getting your micro set, micro sole. And here they're telling you to use their um, clear, which is this one here. Contact a clear. I wouldn't recommend this at all. I didn't. I don't like it. I can't get on with it. Uh, this one here is what I would recommend. Micro crystal clear. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it at any good model shop. Really, really good stuff. It's basically a very, very good quality white glue. I think um, you could also use white glue, but that crystal clear seems to do the job excellently. And then we've got all our colour callouts here, and these are all in the Ravel colours. So we've got, you can see we're mixing some colours here. Um, but these all seem to be greys, light grey, black. They're all greys and blacks. That colour there, anthracite, is an amazing colour. Fantastic to depict your sort of modern plastics, you know, on your motorcycles and cars and stuff. That colour is amazing. Um, so, gloss white down there. And then we've got this light blue matte here. Um, I don't know where the colour is for the body. So they're telling you to paint the body matte, <laughs> I guess. But the body wasn't matte. The body was glossy. Yeah, very strange. Anyway, so here we've got our sprue call outs saying here parts not used. We've got to cut the parts there which aren't used. That's one of the spare wheels by the look of it. So either one version is going to have two spare wheels. Looking at this, it looks quite modular in its design. Um, you can see we've got a very small sprue here with engine parts, another small sprue here with engine parts. Um, it looks like we could have options with different engines. Um, chassis there is all together with some different seat components. And then going over the page, we've got another part here which isn't used. There are the mirrors. I remember seeing those. They're the later type mirrors. So obviously we are going to get a later version um, coming along. And then we've got our clear parts there. And again, you can see they've split the clear into these are all the sort of parts for the station wagon rear. And then these are all the parts for the cab. So I'm guessing there's going to be a short wheelbase coming along at some point. Um, got our five tires there. So they're all like vinyl rubber, as you will see in a minute. And then we've got our sprues there with our different dashboards and everything in our body and everything there. Straight into the instructions. Um, You've got two options here with left hand drive and right hand drive. More about that in a second. Engine is fairly simple in construction. Two halves of the block, put in the sump, put in the top of the head, the rocker cover, whatever you want to call it on. And then we've got here, this looks like it's probably some sort of breather. Then we've got the carburetor there, exhaust manifold, oil filler, oil filter, front cover, fan belt, fan, rubber hose there. That's going to be the bottom hose. All very simple. Um, and as you will see, all very basic. I, I, as I say at the end of this review, I know that because I'm feeling this filming this after the end that you haven't seen yet. Um, I do say that I think Ravel with this kit have actually gone out and, and aimed this kit at, you know, father and son sitting down together and making a model. It's not aimed at your professional model maker because as nice as it is, is, and it is, I mean, look at it, it is gorgeous if you like Land Rovers it's a lovely looking model with no doubt about it um, but when you when you see the axle detail and the the engine detail it's all a bit soft and a bit simplified and I think it's to make the model easier to make but it's also going to end up with a stronger product as well you're not going to have lots of fiddly little tiny parts so um, I think that's what they're aiming at it could even be that it's, it's aimed at being one of these ready-built models um, they tend to be a lot, you know, like the, the Hobby Boss um, tanks and stuff and that 118th scale Harrier. You know, it's, it's originally sold as a built model and then sold as a kit and it's quite simplified. Uh, and it, but in the case of the Harrier, it's also quite inaccurate, I think. But this looks to be pretty good. So going on here and as we can see straight away, very, very simplified gearbox. Um, it's just basically a tube and we've got the transfer box sat on the back of that. Front axle, got diff cover going on there, so we've got a banjo axle for the front. Then we've got our floor here, and it's telling us to drill some holes, so we're probably drilling holes there for the seat mounting, so there'll probably be versions coming along that don't have the seat, so we'll have a van or whatever. Then we've got our um, centre console going on here, 
And let's turn this. We've got different centre consoles for left and right hand drive. It's actually not a centre console. It's a transfer cover, uh, transfer box cover. And then we've got our front of our seat box. So that adds a little detail in there, which is a nice touch. And here you can see what I'm saying. We've got the end of the axles there as a swivel. Very, very simplified. Um, it's telling us not to glue them in, so we're going to get working steering. Um, and that there, you're not going to glue in either. And I guess the chassis is going to hold that up against there. Um, as I say, you know, a little as as a as a Land Rover enthusiast and somebody who likes accuracy in models, I'm a little disappointed in this, but I can fully understand why Ravel have done it. And even with this, I think it's still better than the uh, than the Eshi kit. And you may well find, I don't know, maybe somebody will come out with some aftermarket axles and stuff for this model because it seems to be only this area really that is very simplified. There's simplification throughout the model, there always is, but it seems to be only this area, the axles that are that are a little oversimplified. So we've got leaf springs going in there, front shock absorbers, exhaust system going together, and then the rear axle going in, and that's just going to sit on the um, on the chassis like that. So that's obviously going to give us our strength and help to ensure that everything remains square and we can also check then all four wheels are going to be touching the ground we've got a rear diff cover going on there so it's going to be a salisbury axle on the back not a banjo um so i think salisbury's were standard in the early days on all wheel bases then they became optional and then they stopped making them at all so as you can see things got cheaper and cheaper and cheaper as time went well they didn't get cheaper to buy they got cheaper to make and then we're going to add our leaf springs on there. So basically the leaf springs on the rear are there for cosmetic purposes only. So the axle is firmly mounted to the chassis. So that should pretty much guarantee your four wheel contact on the ground, which is, uh, which is nice. Then we're adding in the engine there. We've got the exhaust pipe there waiting to go onto the uh, exhaust manifold, putting in the prop shafts, building up the radiator and then adding the radiator hoses. And it's telling you where the bottom hose and the top hose goes in the radiator there. Chucking the floor down onto the chassis. And then we're adding in our handbrake. Now, I need to do some research, but it's telling you here the right hand drive has the handbrake on the left and the left hand drive is the handbrake on the right. Certainly in my Land Rover, I've got a, a 2011 Puma short wheelbase um, 90 and the handbrake is underneath my left leg. So certainly on my right hand drive Land Rover, my handbrake is there and they're saying left hand drive. So. Maybe it was different on the series, we'll have to check. Another concern I've got here, they're telling you you've got different centre tunnels and different um, gear shifter layouts for left. OK, and... as I said, this is the third time I've tried to review these instructions. This is now the fourth because I got to hear section 23 talking about the handbrake and my battery went. So there we go, not the battery, the, the, uh, the film was full. So, right, here we go. The memory was full, should I say. So here we got the right hand drive and left hand drive center areas with the different the uh, high ratio and the um, four wheel drive levers. Um, I'm not quite sure this is correct. There may be an error here again, like with the handbrake. I don't think Rover made a different um, a different pattern of levers for left and right hand drive. So it could be that this is incorrect. Check your references. I'm not sure that they did. Um, I could be wrong, but I can see no reason why it matters what side the levers were on because um, they were shorter. They were low. I used to have a series one and they were shorter and lower down than the actual gear lever. So it didn't matter if you had to lean over to the left or lean over to the right or whatever. It, did, it just doesn't matter. Um, so, yeah, a bit strange. Right over the page, we're into seat construction. So we've got three seats going together here, which is very, very simple. And then here we've got two seats with the grab rails on the back. Or you can have the three seats with one grab rail on the back. So there's your option there. Then we've got another single piece three wide seat here with a grab rail on the back and a frame here being constructed that you add those seats to. Then we've got three of these seats which are like a vinyl with the embossed pattern in them as you normally see. And you can either have two with the grab rails or you can have the three. They're telling you here only for German versions you can have an English version with two seats, and I, I can assure you. Um, you can do whatever you want. You can have just a driver's seat if you want. You can have no seats in the back. Do it. It's a Land Rover. You, you can do what you want. Um, and then you've got the three seats here going onto that base there uh, with the backs there. So here you can see when we go over the page, just want to check this is all in shot. Yep. So here you can see that we've basically got the, got the three bench seats here going in. And it's telling you 29 or 30, so you can have the three or the two. 
Then you've got the bench seat going across the back there. Then you've got the different type of seats, the vinyl covered seats here. You can have just the two or the three. And then you've got the, the three separate seats going across the back there. Guessing the difference with those is they all came up as once. That might have been a rock and roll bed or something, I'm not sure. Then you've got this, um, these side facing seats here that go in the back. Then we're onto the front bumper and it's telling us version A and version B. Uh, basically version B has got the number plate attached to the front of the bumper. Version A has got the front the number plate molded in. Then we've got the interior side panels here so you can see our black painted door panels and then we've got our body colour in there fitting the um, fitting the actual uh, fuel filler in there and then we've got the rear panel going on and we've got the side panels rear and the front bumper going onto the chassis there. Straight in left hand drive pedals, left hand drive dashboard um, it's telling you to paint these levers black here. They're the little levers that open the um, the vents on the front. And then we've got this um, sort of top of the bulkhead inside of the engine bay panel here. And then we're going to add a steering wheel and steering column there. And then straight over into right hand drive doing all the same again. Okay. And then with left hand drive here, we're adding the. Um, this is going to be a sort of air intake, I believe, or it may be a heater motor. And that's going to go in there on there on the um, on the heater. Then we've got a brake master cylinder with the servo on it there. And then we do all the same here for right hand drive, just in reverse. And we've got the um, some sort of steady or, or some sort of arm going in there for something or other. Oh, that's steering column. Of course it is. That's the steering column going down through. And then we've got the air intake for the heater there. And then it's telling us here version one, version two, and basically this is saying you can either have the wings drilled out to have the vertical mirrors on the front of the wings, or you can have the sides drilled out to have the mirrors on the hinges, as most modern Land Rovers do. And it's also telling you here to drill a hole in the side, whether you're doing left or right hand drive, and that's just basically for a fresh air vent that goes in the engine bay. So um, there we go. In fact, that may well be, yes, that's actually the air intake for the heater, sorry. So that's what that's all about. Then we've got the rear lights going on. No, we haven't. We're going to drill the back end. And this is telling us to drill the back end for left to right hand drive. And that's for number plate and um, um, and the number plate light fitting. In my experience, they're always on this side. I don't remember seeing any on this side. I could be wrong, but I, in my experience, I've always seen the number plates are always on this side. So um, not quite sure what's going on there. And then we've got the windscreen going in with the uh, glazing going in there. Sorry, I'm jumping the gun. Fitting the instrument panel into the into the uh, body there and fitting the headlamp bowls. Fitting the glazing to the headlamps, fitting the grill, putting the windscreen in. Nice touch, we've got separate wipers in there. Adding all the glazing into the body. And then we're going to drill all these holes in the roof panel. And then add these four clear parts on top of the roof. If somebody can tell me what they're all about, I'd be very interested because I don't know why you would have four clear panels on top of the roof. If someone can tell me, I'd be grateful. Um, then you've got this spare wheel clamp and spare wheel going on there, telling you to cut the centre out of the, the vinyl tyre. Then we're going to put the body onto the chassis, add the roof rack, add this uh, separate roof panel with these four unknown clear parts in it. And then we're going to add our front side lights and our um, indicators. And then we're going to add our rear side lights and indicators. And then what's well, rear lights in it, complete lights. And then we're going to have some grab handles, tow bar. Um, these are going to be reflectors, I would imagine. Fuel filler cap. And then the rear number plate going on. You've got the two different options there with the uh, two different options of um, number plate light. And then same again for the uh, right hand drive. And then we've got the wheels going in. Remember to paint the insides of the wheels black because you've got those see through slots in the wheels in there. And then we're coming to the finish now. So we're going to put the battery in, some sort of um, reservoir for something or other, air intake going on there. That's going to be, I'm guessing, the top of the fuse box or something there. And then we've got the bonnet going on, wheels going on there. And as I said earlier, we've got the mirrors. So you can either have the mirrors in the top of the, uh, top of the wings or you can have the mirrors on the sides there on the sides of the hinges. I would certainly go for the mirrors on the door hinges. That seems to be the most normal way. And then we've got an aerial here, or you can have an aerial on the roof. And again, if it's left hand drive, the aerials on the other side. And then we've got this heater air intake here, we're adding decals to it. We've got the same here for the right hand drive version. And that's basically it. And then we come to the back here, we've got some color call outs. 
and I don't understand why they're telling you to paint it in a matte colour. It wasn't matte, it would have been gloss. Um, but, you know, you can paint it what colour you want, really. You can do it, 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 it's a Land Rover. If you want to do it purple with pink spots and bright green wheels, I'm sure there's one out there. So, um, there we go, that's the instructions. And as I say, you know, it's quite simple in a few areas, but it is a beautiful looking model when it's built. You look at that, it's really, really nice. Onto the decals, we also get this um, health and safety sheet, you know, don't stick corn, uh, cocktail sticks in your eyes, don't eat your dog, things like that. And then we've got a decal sheet here, which is, um, again, made in Ravel, made in Germany by Ravel, printed in Italy, sorry. So, um, basically we can see here, they're lovely decals. I'll try and get the light a bit better for you on these. There we go. We can see we've got instruments there, all sorts of placards and data plaques and everything. Some little labels from the sides, that looks like an interior mirror. We've got the side mirrors there, a Land Rover badge, another Land Rover badge, Land Rover badge for the back. And then interestingly, we've got all these different number plate combinations. So you've got the, this is the dealer, the dealer Land Rover labels. Then we've got, this is um, Germany, Deutschland, and we've got another one there. And then we've got English there, NSO395K, so that's in the old black and silver number plates. Then we've got Netherlands, then we've got French, uh, Great Britain again, but this time in the, the more modern um, yellow and white reflective. Austria is that, in the black. Italy, which is very nice. Uh, Czech Republic, or maybe in Czechoslovakia in that period, I can't remember, my history is not that good. Belgium, uh, Ireland, and finally we've got these two down here, Nevada, you can have Land Rover US number plates. So, um, very nice set of decals. So, now we've seen all that. Let's have a look at some plastic. Right, so first of all, we've got this body shell here, which is um, very nice. It's very strong. It feels, feels quite thick. Um, and it's nicely detailed. We've got some nice panel lines on here. Got the nice handles. Uh, they're not hollowed out, so you might want to just hollow them out with the tip of a knife or something. We've got the rivet detail here on the bodywork, which is a nice touch. Um, there's also a rivet deal on these cappings here, and I think on this year these would have been galvanised, so you can paint them silver. Uh, we've got the roof there. Um, very, very nice. Again, we've got an integral rear cross member, just like the Hobby Boss kit. And you notice on this one, it's got the, the flanges on the outside. On earlier Land Rivers, they put these flanges on the outside, and they're welded onto the chassis. And then they're actually bolted through onto the body. Now, on the later Land Rovers, the tabs are actually welded to the top of the rear cross member, so the bolt the bolts actually appear on the outside, so you don't see these tabs. Um, and then we've got the the, the, the typical Series Three sunken front. Um, I'm guessing if you wanted to with this, you could do a lot of conversion work and turn it into a very very early 1984 um, 110 if you wanted to, but uh, you probably wouldn't want to because the wheel arches are the wrong shape and everything. So yeah, build it as a Series 3, paint it what colour you like, um, and go from there. So there's the body, then we've got a bag here with some tyres in, Let's see what these are like. be interesting to see if they've got any lettering or anything on them, I bet they haven't. And I'm sure somebody will come out with aftermarket wheels and tyres for this. Okay, so yeah, as I said, no lettering on them at all. So they're totally plain. They also look quite skinny. They're solid, they're not hollow. Um, they're, they don't feel like vinyl, they feel more like rubber, but I don't know. Let's do the, um, are they attacked by extra thin? No, they're not, so they're not styrene. So uh, yeah. But um, nice tread on them. They've got a bit of a very a bit of a seam line, which is very light. But and, and as I say, unfortunately, there's no tire lettering or anything on them. So and they do look very skinny. There we go. So we get um, what do we get? One, two, we get five of them. And then this bag here, we've got lots of little bags, which is unusual for a kit. Slide these sprues out here. 
have a look at them individually. So this one here, this is going to be our interior door panels. So we've got the, the, the rear end here, which is all just going to be aluminium. Um, and then we've got the interior door handles here again with the, the lifting handle latches. You can see there got some little matte pockets in there or little indentation, should I say. Um, no ejector pin marks on it. it does feel quite oily so it's going to need a wash and that's the inside of the rear door and the inside of the um, rear side panels so yeah that's all very nice then we've got our bonnet which has got some mold flow lines in it you can see there if I could feel a step then but I can't and then we've got the um, almost looks like a split in there it's so fine and we've got some rivet detail on here but we have got some sink marks but not to worry the panels on a Land Rover are all wavy anyway so ejector pin marks on the inside to deal with but nothing too bad and then this is the inside of the um, this is looking down inside there that panel fits up in there so that's your um for your heater and everything is going to go in there and then we've got the windscreen panel going in there with the um, with the vents on the bottom which open up which Land Rovers didn't have after 2007. There we go. And then, then we've got the interior floor. You can see here Revel 2019, so we can see it's a brand new kit. And we've got the interior floor there with the rear wheel arches and everything. And um, yeah, seat box and all very nice. It could, it could have done with some texture on the floor, but I guess you could always add that if you wanted to. Um, next bag here. We've got again various sprues. I've got a very small sprue here, and this is our engine detail. And we can see that the the cylinder head is integral with the block, and then part of the cylinder head is integral with the uh, rocker cover. So, just give you a close up of that there. You can see the details quite sharp. Um, not the sharpest, but it's quite sharp. But it is a fairly basic model I think they've basically aimed this model rather than making it 100% purely accurate detail scale for the um, for your professional modelers out there I think they've actually concentrated on making it more um, you know for dad and his son to sit down and build and they don't want it too complex or too flimsy because you know a few kids might want to build it and play with it and that, that would probably ch explain the chunky axles and stuff so on this sprue here we can see we've got a, a nicely molded grille with the mesh on I'll give you a close-up in a minute we've got three different sets of door mirrors these are the latest ones these are just like the door mirrors on mine um, and then we've got these here now quite what the difference is with those I can't see but unfortunately they've all got great big sink marks in them so they're going to have to be dealt with and probably easy just to float some Mr. Service in there let it self level and um, and deal with it that way um, and then we've got our headlamp bowls there so yeah I'm assuming they're going to go in up behind there so give you a close up on that grill detail which is quite nice and then mirrors there which are lovely but again great big sink marks in them Another tiny sprue here, which has got our front bumper with the number plate on it. There's our bonnet stay, rear interior grab rail there. Uh, not quite sure what that bar there is. There's some more. This is going to be seat frames. This is going to be seat frames here, I'm guessing, um, which is all very nice. A little bit of a texture on the bumper there, which would be nice. It'd be interesting to get that galvanized effect on there with um, perhaps dry brushing some silver, you know, paint it silver and then dry brush some different color silvers and splodge it on or whatever. We'll see. Um, there's our roof rack, which is very nice. Another tiny sprue here, which has got, again, this is going to be seat mountings. So this kit is going to obviously come out in many, many different guises with and without and with different seats and body styles and everything. So um, expect to see a lot of uh, Series 3 Land Rovers appear. And we obviously got some handles on there, which are part of the seat frames by the look of it. But they are very nicely moulded indeed. And then the last sprue from this bag has got our roof panel there with a multitude of holes in it. And then we've got our spare wheels by the look of it there. 
and then we've got our there's our steel wheels there so we've got the outer and the inners we've got our fan there battery uh, I'm guessing that's going to be the the parts that go inside the wheels to allow them to turn but I'll give you a close-up the the roof paneling is some um, the riveting detail on there is lovely we've also got lovely detail on the wheel centers it's a little soft but you know it's there um, we've even actually got a Volvo look unusual these days or unusual until these days I guess but yeah very um very pleased with that a little bit of flash on that one there and he's removing but those wheels do look nice and with a bit of a wash in there to you know perhaps make them look a bit dusty maybe a little bit of rust in them they'll look really really nice indeed another bag here this is our um next but last bag if you like if you don't count the clear parts you can see the way Ravel's done this with all these little sprues, as I say, it's going to be, um, there's going to be many different versions. So here we go, loads of parts for the spares box. So we've got a left hand drive dash and a right hand drive dash. We've got our left and right hand drive um, center consoles, uh, uh, transmission covers, if you like. I cannot believe, I cannot believe for the life of me, I could well be wrong, um, I will check out and I'll inform you when I build this thing, but I can't believe they actually changed the side of the um, the ratio levers for left and right hand drive. I'd have thought that would have all been stayed the same. Uh, it certainly does these days. A little tow bar there which looks very nice indeed. And then we've got the not quite sure that's oh that's the bottom of the dashboard so that's going to be your legs would be here um, I think there should be some switch detail in there there may be a decal for it and then we've got some grab handles there seat base by the look of it seat backs and more seats here more seat parts there so yeah very nice I'll give you a close-up on the uh, instrument panel so there's the left hand drive and there's the right hand drive and we can see we've got the that's the heater vent there which goes up for the um, for the heater and then you've got these handles here one there one there there for opening the vents on the front bulkhead and, uh, very nice so this sort of design of dashboard stayed all the way up until like 2006 right through the TD5s and everything they had a very very similar dashboard and then we've got some more engine parts here again small sprue so I'm thinking they're going to come up with some different options um, there's our air intake there radiator nice grill on it there's our engine front cover sump radiator shroud a distributor cap hoses for the engine all very nice lovely and it looks like that is supposed to be the carburetor with it looks like on the top there we've got the uh, the SU or maybe they're depicting as a Strongberg but um here we go, I have put out the dash pot on the top and there's the radiator detail there so we've got engraving both sides distributor cap there and hosing with some nice detail there's a, there's a master cylinder there by the look of it so that's all very lovely leave our clear parts till last I've got a bag here which was already open here we've got our big chunky axles and everything so here we've got um, axles steering wheel obviously prop shafts uh, steering tie rod then we've got our diff cover there so it has got a Salisbury axle by the look of it on the back um, and then we've got the exhaust system here obviously There's some control levers there springs very small sink marks in the middle which is what you come to expect with these springs are molded in one piece but hey ho the other part of the exhaust system there and that's probably seat backs and stuff there those square parts and here we've got as I say the very very simplified hubs and everything there's no swivels or anything on this like there is on the real thing that's um, very unfortunate I, I kind of wish they'd done the detail better on there when you compare this to the 35th scale kits that are out there this is uh, extremely simple and also down here you can see we've got the, the bottom of the transfer box this um, rectangular plate with the bolts around it that looks very accurate and you've got the drum brake there which is the handbrake 
these things don't have a handbrake on the wheels they have a, a brake on the back of the transfer box so when you actually put the handbrake on if it's in four wheel drive all four wheels are actually locked um, and the gearbox there that is ridiculous that is absolutely ridiculous it's like a toy so uh, that's not not really correct at all and then we've got the um, high low ratio here um, hang on is that the high low I can't remember if that was the high low ratio or the four wheel drive but inside there it was a selector for either high low ratio or four wheel drive I think it was probably four wheel drive uh, and then the high low ratio was taken in care of inside the transfer box but the gearbox should be you know it's an LT77 or an R380 well on this one it would be an LT77 so um yeah actually no it wouldn't have been LT77 would it on a series 3 it would have been the earlier box and then here we got the last last um, sprue here and we've got the big chunky chassis which is very nice indeed very rigid very lovely but again very simplified on the front unfortunately I'm, I'm very disappointed I was hoping to have some lovely suspension because the engine detail and that is really really nice and when you actually look at the the um, the box art the, the you know the, it looks lovely but we have got separate windscreen wipers which is a nice touch and we've got separate switches there for the steering column we've got our front diff cover there so the front would have been a banjo axle the back would have been a Salisbury then we've got the air intakes there shock absorbers again massive eyelets on the end of them I'm not sure these little bits here are that's going to be an air intake on the side I'm guessing or a Lancia badge um, so there's some levers there for high row ratio, four wheel drive, whatever. So there we go, guys. There's a close up of your seat detail. The chassis is really nothing much to, to say. It's, it's there. Um, and there we go. So that's the, uh, the pedals there. So the kit's got it all there. Um, and other than the actual ends of the, the axles, it just seems very, very it's very very nice it just seems those axles kind of let it down in the in the accuracy scheme of things so we've got two sprues here with all our clear parts and they're not bagged separately so hopefully nothing's damaged and you can see here it is they've been rubbing against each other and scratched so come on Ravel put them in separate bags or put something between them please so we've got our clear parts and they are very very clear again I don't they, these go in the roof maybe someone can tell me I'm not sure what they are um, these clear panels so we've got our little side windows there for the um, for the rear they're going to go in here on the sides and then we've got a rear door glazing there these are going to be the rear side windows I'm guessing here and then we've got our windows there for the actual the back end and then on the front again two separate sprues so it shows us we've got different versions coming um, and then we've got the lights there, the lights, the um, skylight, should I say, for the county style roof. And then we've got side panels there and we've got a windscreen panels there. And as we can see, we've got the, the scratches on there caused by them being back together. So naughty Ravel, that just be, have to be polished out. So, but they are very clear. We'll do the, um, we'll do the distortion test. Where's the use this so we can look through the, the side windows and we can see it's very very good indeed had the windscreen the same okay so very nice clear parts really really nice so I'm going to put those to one side and I'll bag those separately so they don't get scratched anymore so there we go guys that is the brand new Revell 124 scale series 3 long wheel base station wagon is what they're calling it and um, am I impressed yes I am um, it is really really nice it's a million percent better than the um, the old Eshi kit uh, it's a little simplified in places like that there being part of the body um, but I believe that the market Ravel are going for, instead of satisfying modelers to the nth degree and having the finest, the most precise detail, I think what they've done, they've designed and developed a kit which is not only beautiful, I mean you can't argue that the actual 
when you look at the image here, you cannot argue that is a beautiful looking model. You know, it, it, I mean, if you build it in those colours and paint the wheels white and fit the tyres properly, um, you know, and get your wheel centres and your wheel nuts painted and everything like that, it's going to be it's going to be a stunning little model on your cabinet. It's going to look lovely. Um, but then, as far as the actual uh, the actual accuracy goes, as far as like your axles and your suspension and stuff like that, you know, it, it's a little uh, a little soft. I mean, the engine is a little simple to all of the moulding all over is a little soft, if you ask me. Um, I, I I have a feeling this will probably end up will probably have, was destined to be one of Ravel's uh, master models that's already built. Um, that would explain the, the slight simplification, simplification of some of the parts. But I will build this um, and I will build it on this channel or another channel, which I will talk more about on another video um, and basically go from there. So that's what this has been. That's the kit. I would suggest if you like Land Rovers, I would suggest you go and get one. Um, it, it is by far the best Series 3 um, Land Rover kit out there. It is really, really nice. Um, go and get yourself one. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks for subscribing and, and thanks for all you, the donations from you all on PayPal and Patreon. Gratefully received. And uh, I look forward to... Um, to seeing you all soon for the next build or well, the next part of my um, 110 Land Rover, the Hobby Boss kit. Just bring it across this one. I'm building this now as a short wheelbase. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen that already, go back and have a look. You'll, you'll enjoy it. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.